Hey guys, thanks for watching. Scott from Adrenaline Adventures here. Happy 2019. If everything goes according to plan, this will be my first video of the new year. I'm out in the woods with my two dogs, Scout and Ridge. Scout is seven years old, Ridge is six years old. They're Vishlas, which are Hungarian retrievers, bird, uh, bird dogs, high energy dogs. So I'm out uh, biking with them and hiking with them. Um, drawback to my pooches is that uh, they're not cold weather dogs. So I'm not able to get out with them as much as I would like in the winter time. So what I'm excited about on this trip is that I got a canvas tent with a nice wood stove. What I'm going to do is set this up as my base camp for the winter. A friend of mine has let me use their property, so I plan to get out here in the uh, in the cold weather when there's a lot of snow and and spend some time in the tent with uh, with the dogs and, uh, and maybe uh, Griff and, and who knows. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, this video is going to be setting up the tent, um, getting everything set up, and uh, hanging out with the dogs in the woods. Really appreciate you watching. I'm uh, pretty excited about this because uh, this property is near some biking trails so I can get my fat bike out in the winter time and, uh, and do some biking. The dogs are great when they're moving but uh, if we stop they get, they get cold so I'm really excited to be able to bike to a destination which will be this tent. Um, get inside the tent, uh, have a nice fire, spend the night or, uh, or just bike back home. So stay tuned. I plan on making a lot of these videos with my uh, canvas cabin in the woods. Alright, here we go. Alright, this is going to be the spot. <laughs> my dogs are going to be uh, interrupting this video quite a bit. Um, so you'll just have to bear with me on that one. I'm out, uh, I'm out with my dogs. It's about zero degrees Celsius, so it's not too cold. I'm out here before the snow comes. Um, film this uh, before Christmas. So again, I'm hoping that uh, I can get this set up and enjoy, enjoy it all winter long. And uh, we'll see how the tent holds up. Uh, it's a new tent. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. But um, I set it up already at, uh, at home before I came out here. And uh, I'm really impressed with it. Really quality uh, tent. And uh, I'll go into more detail as we put it up, okay? All right. Spot here. Okay. So the tent's about um, 10 feet. I don't know what it is about tripods, but my dogs just seem to want to walk between them. Uh, so the tent, the tent is about uh, 10 feet in diameter, 
and uh, it's kind of like a teepee style tent. There's a center pole that keeps it up and then we stake it in. Um, one thing it does, it has a, um, has a zip in floor, which is pretty cool. So um, you can choose to use it uh, with the floor or without it. For this particular trip, since I'm coming here early uh, before the snow comes, so I'm gonna try it with the um, floor in. It's like a rubberized material, so it looks pretty durable. I'm gonna try that and uh, we'll see how, uh, see how it holds up. Because I'm going to be making a few trips here, um, and I want this to be comfortable, I've actually brought some uh, camping cots. Not exactly uh, backpacking material, but because I'm uh, using my deer cart to haul this gear out, um, I'm going to uh, pay the price now, early in the season, drag all this gear out here, and then I uh, basically gamble that uh, no one comes across it and I'm able to leave it out here all winter. But um, these will also be comfortable to get uh, myself and the dogs off the ground and I can also store equipment uh, underneath them. So it kind of makes the better use of the floor space in the tent. So this is the wood stove. It is not light. It's not a backpacking stove, but um, there's trade-offs with all gear. Uh, I went with a heavier, more um, solid basically for lack of a better word uh, wood stove that's uh, gonna hold up I'm gonna be able to cook on it and it's gonna hold a five inch uh, stove pipe and it's just a little more durable it doesn't uh, wobble around like some of the lighter ones that you can you know maybe backpack with or throw in a sled um, I really love this I'll get into it a little bit later <laughs> oh. This is the tent. Let me get this out of the way here. Oh, Nice and bright, doesn't have a mark on it. That's gonna change quick. So you're gonna put these on. If you haven't already discovered, my dogs do not stop ever. So they're always uh, on the go. And uh, you'll see that uh, the more you see them in my videos, they have lots of energy and they always say, a tired Vishla is a happy Vishla. So um, if you ever uh, you know, think about getting a, a dog and you like the idea of a Vishla, if you're active, I mean, they're a great dog. What I love about them in the bush is they literally will never, never take off of you. At least mine don't anyways. Um, if you spend a time with them, um, Scout seven years old, Ridge is six, they never, they call it Vel the Velcro dog for a reason. But um, if you let them train them properly and let them run free, they're a dog that needs a lot of exercise, but uh, they will never take off from you in the bush. Ridgey chases squirrels and we see deer all the time. they will take a few, you know, he'll run after a little bit, but he'll never, uh, he'll never run away. All I have to do is turn my back and walk that way and give him a scream, give him a yell that I'm uh, heading out, and he'll uh, stop with him do it, what he's doing and, uh, and follow me. So that's what's, really, that's what's really great about him. Lots of energy. A, a day like today is great. And uh, when it's time to get in the tent and get on the cot, uh, they'll, be out, uh, they'll be out really quick. So it'll be good. Hey, buddy? Okay, so anyways, let's get this state together. Okay, this tent comes with two different types of pegs. This one here is for staking out the tent. 
into the dirt. This one here is for the guy lines, which are these things. So a little more heavy duty. These is what we use to uh, stake these out. And these actually do most of the uh, support and stability of the tent. So I'm gonna do these right now. Really? Okay, the poles for the tent are in here. It's really just one main pole. Here we go. What I like about it, it has this um, kind of rubber gasket here. It's actually, it's a, it's a hard rubber. I mean, it's cold out, I mean, that could be a factor, but um, it's a good uh, protection for the uh, fabric of the tent. So on the floor, and it also has one for the bottom of the tent. Spring loaded, so there's uh, wires in there, so it doesn't, disappear on you. So that's it. What I like about this, you can hang a lantern from there at nighttime, that sort of thing. So this obviously goes at the top of the tent. And let's see if we can get in it. Okay, so as you can see, it actually holds up just with the pole in the middle. This is the frame for the door. So this is like a... Uh, should be another... Yeah. Another bracket here. So this one goes in like so. It goes like this. So this is the basically a frame for the front door. So really you just got the main pole and this, and then we just tie it out and uh, you're pretty much set. What's nice is this uh, A-frame pole here has a, uh, a rod that sticks out of it and they actually give you a grommet to go through. Actually has a little bit of weather stripping in there. That goes in there like so. So the next step is to stake out the 10 ties that are about two feet above the ground and this will uh, pull the sidewalls out and that'll be pretty much it and then we'll get the wood stove in. These are the stakes for it.
So it's really important to pick a spot where, even though I'm in the woods, directly above us is there's no real low lying branches sort of thing because this is where the stovepipe's gonna be coming from. And stovepipe goes up above the peak of the tent and you wouldn't want it too close to any branches or that sort of thing. So I took consideration looking around for a spot like that and make sure we were, that wasn't an issue. All right, guys, there's the tent set up. Without filming any of this, it really wouldn't have taken me too long to do it. So Scott, what do you think? You like it? All right. Um, so, so far I got it set up. The, uh, the guy wire right there leading, uh, basically cutting the front door in half. I don't even know if it's really necessary, but I'm gonna put it up for now. Um, I can see uh, getting my uh, self caught up in it coming in and out of the tent. So once I'm here, um, I could just probably go without that. But uh, when I leave, just for stability's sake, I'll probably uh, keep it uh, into the ground so the wind doesn't blow it over, that sort of stuff. But I'll give you a quick little tour of the tent. You see the layout of the outside. So that's a five inch diameter um, hole for the stovepipe that's gonna come through there. And of course, it's tied up. So when you're not using it, this would come down. So obviously the brain, it's got a little bit of Velcro here to keep it in place. Very important when it is tied up so it doesn't fall down onto the hot stovepipe. So um, the setup they have there is pretty good. You can tell there's uh, vents up top. I think there's four of them all together. There's a lot of these zippered little vents or little kind of trap doors, I guess. Um, on, I think there's four of those as well. So if you needed to, uh, I really don't know, to be honest with you, firewood, shoes, muddy shoes, that sort of stuff, getting things in and out of the tent, that's an option, or just ventilation when you got a fire going. These things here, in case you didn't use the, the floor, I have it staked in using the tabs from the floor but if you weren't using the floor you could just stake it in using this that, that's what those are for okay so let's go inside check it out there we go so you got a storage bag there for some loose items another one there pretty basic setup again this floor as you can see it's like a rubberized uh, material and basically looking at it it's, it looks pretty durable I'm impressed with that again I think I said it's about 10 feet in diameter it's almost like a uh, basically a circle or an octagon if you want to call it that on top here and you got the vents and you can see how that pole sits in there and you got a little hook for a lantern, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna get the wood stove going. So yeah, this wasn't really too hard to put up at all. Hopefully the echo's not too bad for you. I'm gonna get the wood stove in here, set up the cots, and by that time, uh, try to unpack uh, all the little things. So this is the wood stove I decided to go with. It's a Camp Chef barrel type wood stove, much heavier than you need. Um, I've There's a Shepherd camp stove for uh, tents and much lighter um, but I wasn't going to this wasn't gonna be something I was going to use to backpack with I knew that uh, if I was carrying a 70 pound tent I'd rather have a, a solid um, wood stove that I can cook on and the biggest thing for me is it gives it the stability for the stovepipe because basically it's the foundation for your stovepipe if you have a light stove that's uh, wobbly and fragile um, you got more of a chance of the stovepipe falling over or the wind blowing it down you're gonna have a lot more issues that way so this stove is pretty heavy everything fits inside it which i like you see a solid door here so in there there's grates that go on the side of it. it's going to uh, help in cooking there's lots of stove pipe in there the legs fit in there and the uh, spark arrester is in there as well so i'll get it set up and show you how it works oh. Okay, it's time to put the stove together. Make no mistake, this is not a light stove. We think, honey, you want to get this going and warm up. I know, I know. 
And uh, these two, as you haven't noticed, are very jealous. So if one's getting petted, usually the other one wants to get in there. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. So if I haven't mentioned, so this might be a reason why I don't fill with my dogs too often. Is they are, they want to be, they want to be next to you all the time. Yeah, Vishlas are fantastic. If you want a dog, Vishlas are, uh, Vishlas are dogs, especially males, that they are with you. Oh no, this guy, this guy just started digging. What's in the hole? Let's go. What's in there? What's in there? All right, dig a hole. What's in there? Go get it. All right, I got filming to do. Okay, so this is a stovepipe. Very heavy. You gotta watch your fingers on this stuff. You can easily slash your fingers open. And the dogs, too. You gotta be careful with the pooches. They, they don't hurt themselves. Um, there's sides for each side of the stove. And there's a base that goes inside it to um, kind of uh, get the fire off of the base of the stove. That would be this. And again, this stove is heavy duty. This stuff is also really solid. This is a spark arrestor that goes on the end of the sto of the stovepipe at the very top of it. So the theory is that if there's a big uh, spark flying up that's going to uh, keep its heat, this will uh, hopefully catch it and uh, let it burn out under the mesh before it lands onto a dry leaf uh, on the ground. But these are the legs. Legs have nice plastic caps at the end, so they're not going to go through the bottom of the floor of my tent, because uh, if these were just sharp metal, um, I'd have to put something under there so it doesn't cut through the fabric, but it already does that. So, legs. And this is the damper for the um, goes in the chimney goes in the chimney pipe at the base of it, so you can fluctuate the airflow and uh, control your fire that way. So first step is putting the legs on, and these things just they, they slide on. You just tighten them up with a screw here. I miss having a fireplace at my house. We got a gas fireplace. And I used to have a wood stove in my old garage. I used to use all the time. And we moved. And a gas fireplace just isn't quite the same. So I'm really excited to get this, get my uh, wood stove itch scratched. Okay, so that's the legs on. Watch the over here. If you can hear that, it's pretty solid. So basically, there's the hole for the pipe. You just want to line it up with that. Whether I do it with this, oh, lost the leg here. Yeah, I probably, well, with the sides, I'm gonna probably want it straight on. And imagine like that. It's also, it's pretty important, actually, of course, it's wobbly right here. And you gotta realize that the stove pipe is sitting in here and that's really the only thing holding it up is the stove. So that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to do something about that. I may just have to prop something underneath it, but that's pretty much where the stove is going to be. I'll set up the uh, yeah. So we we'll get the pipe up. All right. So the stove pipe's got to get put together now, and if you notice the the first piece is the narrow piece, and if you can see the hole there, that is where the dampening device goes into. 
So this is the section here that's going to fit, actually this section. That section is going to fit onto this stove and that's going to basically be what the pipe is supported by. I'm going to put on my leather gloves so I don't slice my fingers open like I was just telling you about. This stuff is really sharp. Yes. Oh, you can't chew on my glove. You can't chew on my glove. So, anyways, use those. The damper is in here. That's installed. So you got to, it's very important to do that first because you're going to be feeding this up through inside the tent and out. <clears throat> okay, so I guess this setup would be different depending on what tent you have because this you have independent manufacturers here. This is a um, Camp Chef stove and then you have a Play-Doh um, canvas tent. So it's not like the tent is designed around the stove or vice versa. Um, so what I'm going to do is this, um, this bent end here has to go into the stove we got to make room for the damping device, so we're going to put this through here. You see it's a little close to there, but by the time it's, by the time it's in the stove here, it sits in there pretty good. We're going to give it a little bit of a wiggle, then it's in there solid. So now I'm going to go on the outside of the... So now I'm going to go on the outside of the tent and put the remaining four pieces of stovepipe in. But I am going to have to uh, shimmy the one leg here because it's going to affect how stable the stove is. Forgot to put the spark arrestor on the top. So this thing just opens up like almost like an almost like an envelope, and uh, it does the job. It's not nothing fancy, but it works. So you can see it's a nice fit. And the material there, obviously you gotta be very careful that uh, this is stable, it doesn't slide off. We don't want that to happen. And then there's our pipe. 
and you can see the peak of the tent is oh there we go so the snowflake is quite a bit higher than the peak of the tent and that's how things are supposed to be if you just had your stove pipe here um, there's not enough clearance for any sparks to, to be able to cool off before they hit the tent material so actually very well designed so I'm happy with it let's go take a look from far away here yeah I like it looks good final step final step for the stove is to put the side brackets on there's holes holes in the side that just slides in and again they're really solid so you can put um, you know dishes fry pans on here that sort of thing some boiling water is gonna be nice so there's one on each side really solid door and this goes on the bottom of the the barrel stove so you can put your wood on here that sort of stuff yeah we're ready for a fire okay so it's time to get a fire going um, because of the wire grate at the bottom of the stove I need something to actually hold the shavings and the smaller wood to actually get my fire started once it's going I can just throw logs in there and split wood and it won't be a factor but uh, right now unfortunately in this area there's no shortage of uh, ash bark the um, ash borer has pretty much decimated any of the ash trees in the any forest around my where I live so getting some bark is not a problem so I'm going to put all my shavings on here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fire started on this piece of bark and slide it into the stove and that way my dogs don't stop but you can probably hear that um, believe it or not, they're just having fun, but you'd swear they're ripping each other apart. So uh, anyways, I'll get my shavings in on here. I'll slide this into the fire or into the uh, wood stove and that'll get my fire going and I'll be able to pile up kindling on top of that until it's a roaring fire and then we can put the bigger logs on it once it gets going. Okay, I got my shavings on this nice piece of bark here and you can see, I think with the exposure, let me see if I can get this in here for you. The grate, there you go. You can see the grate in there, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on there and that'll hold the shavings in place until they start up. And then I have some small kindling, I'll get that on there. And once the fire gets roaring, then I can throw in logger, larger um, pieces of wood and then them falling through the grate's not an issue. So I'm just going to put this right here. To make things simple, I'm just going to use a match. that go in there and make sure that's in in there okay and there we go make sure the damper is open should be yeah, and there we go so uh, that's the sound I wanted to hear so we got someone crackling in there and there's no smoke in the tent. It all seems to be going out of the chimney, which is what I want. Okay, guys, I got a really nice fire going in there now. Um, you can really see the steam coming up here. This is a nice little latch to be able to open it up. And you can just hear the wind cycling in there. You can just hear the wind roaring in there. Nice fire going. It really uh, shoots up here. I have the option of dampening it like that. I see the options of being able to control the fire and I'm gonna just let it get going really good now and later on I can slow it down by doing that but she's going good now so it doesn't take long for this tent to heat up with a big stove like that in it I mean I got this stove mainly because uh, it gives me options um, it's a little overkill for a small tent like this but if I ever decide to get a bigger tent down the road something like a uh, like mainly like a, a moose hunting camp sort of thing where it's 20 by 20 and um, this stove would more than um, heat a, a tent that size up for this tent here I certainly don't have to have a big roaring fire in there because uh, I mean I'll be down in my underwear in no time if I keep a fire going like this it's really warm steam's cooking off here so it's first real fire on there so it's good to to get one going first I'm not going to sleep in it tonight because of uh, uh, just the paint just having a dry run through it um, 
I just want to get a fire in there going before I uh, actually sleep in the tent and make sure everything runs well and me and the, the dogs will be out here again on an adventure uh, camping out in it. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, this tent is made by Play-Doh and it's a company that reached out for me and uh, I got a you know full disclosure on this is that uh, this tent was given to me so it was completely free and uh, with no kind of strings attached they I don't know if you can see this with the smoke or not here so um, yeah no strings attached they just gave it to me and said hey would you use it in a video and uh, it's quite frankly it's the first thing I got for free uh, as a youtuber um, I was looking for a, a canvas tent um, anyways this honestly wasn't the one I was going to buy quite frankly I didn't even know anything about uh, this tent it's sold on Amazon so I've never come across this on a website or anything so I really had no intention of buying this tent but uh, I gotta say so far I'm really impressed with it so uh, I would certainly have considered buying I just didn't even know it existed quite frankly um, so yeah I just wanted to uh, make sure I was clear on that that uh, um, no strings attached but I, I'm doing an honest uh, review of this and as I leave it out here and I use it a lot more often if it breaks down I'll tell you if it falls apart I'll tell you but right now so far I'm really impressed with it so um, thanks for watching this video Hope you enjoy it. We're going to be back out here, me and my dogs and maybe my wife and Griffin and um, doing some bike packing and some uh, hiking in the area and we'll, we'll use this as a base camp. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm getting hot here. And if you uh, haven't already done so, please subscribe for more uh, videos. So cheers. We got another one of the books.